If you're one of the lucky one of us to have worked during the pandemic over the last year and a half and been deemed essential, then undoubtedly you are tired, stressed out, probably stretched thin because you've dealt with the absolute worst of society. You've had to deal with people during the mask mandate, during the vaccination or not wanting to be vaccinated. You had to deal with people during the height of the political unheaval of last year. And even now, people who are just not wanting to go along with the situation or maybe even be you know, overly cautious. Working in security, specifically if you're working in retail establishments, has got to have been difficult for you because I know it's been difficult for me. I watched a video yesterday from DEF CON 3 Security, an amazing security guard with a great channel out of California. And he was talking about how quickly our life goes by, how we only have so many heartbeats, so much time on this planet. And I'm noticing so many people that are absolutely miserable, not just in these retail establishments, but in security as well. Right now we're entering a time that's called the great resignation. So many people giving up their jobs, choosing to stay home and collect unemployment or try and find their passion, things like music or art or even YouTube. And guys, listen, I get it. But I think that there are three things that you can look at right now as potential motivators for your unhappiness. If you're a security guard and right now you're miserable, I wanna talk about these three things in one simple change of perspective that could really help you have a more positive and fruitful life in the next few months coming up to end out 2021. Stay tuned for today's debrief. Yo, what's going on guys? It's your boy, a typical security guard. Super excited to be talking to you guys. Once again, I've been working 75 hour weeks for the last month and I have, I think two or three more of those coming up before my trip to Salt Lake City, Utah, where I'll be attending Sheepdog Response with Tim Kennedy to do a one week immersion class going over everything from combatives to firearms training, uh, first aid, situational awareness. I'm super excited. And guys, look, I have something in the works that is going to be awesome and amazing for each one of you that are a part of this community. I'm telling you, this is not just about me. This is about all of us, because ultimately the goal of this channel is to educate, to inform and to motivate entry level security guards so that we can change the narrative around what we're doing. Guys, as always, if you're getting any benefit from the videos that we are uploading, please like, share, subscribe. You can just hit that little notification icon that looks like this. And today I am drinking my absolute favorite, Elijah Craig. This is my favorite whiskey. Guys, I hope that if you're working hard, you're putting in those hours, that you're also taking time to put your feet up and enjoy yourself. Tonight I'm gonna spend a great evening with my beautiful wife. I'm gonna drink this whiskey and uh, hopefully, um, you know, <clears throat> hopefully get a little lucky. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about the three aspects of your career that are probably or most likely leading to your unhappiness and downright making you miserable. So I do these super long intros and let's get right to it. I'm sure you don't wanna hear me babble anymore. Number one is going to be pay. Now I think of these three things as the hierarchy of needs, right? There is the hierarchy of human needs, which I believe is food, shelter, um, companionship. There, there's something out there that psychologically they say that if these, 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 these human needs are met, that it leads or lends to happiness. And that without these things being met, most people are just miserable. And I think that also goes for us in security. There is a hierarchy of these three things that have to be met for most of us to feel content. Number one is going to be pay. If you are working in security, you're working in a uh, position of being unarmed or armed, whatever, but you're not getting adequately uh, paid enough, you're gonna be unhappy, guys. Listen, at the end of the day, we say that it's not about money, but it really is. We have to be able to pay our bills. We have to be able to take care of our responsibilities to meet our needs. And if you're working, specifically if you're putting in 
uh, a lot of hours or you're working a really dangerous post. And let's be honest, most people who are working unarmed, who are very new or entry level security guards, they're working some of the most dangerous posts. We've talked about this in terms of working in uh, Section 8 housing projects, working in banks, working in gas stations, uh, even working in warehouses or on, on docks. These things can be extremely dangerous. If you're not getting compensated for that, that is going to play into your unhappiness. So what do you do? Well, first off, it all comes down to what your needs are and what your uh, idea of a proper salary or proper pay is. One of the things here uh, in Portland, everyone is protesting and marching and quitting their job over a uh, livable wage, right? And I always ask people, well, what is a livable wage? A livable wage for someone in Portland, Oregon is gonna be a lot different than a livable wage for someone in Little Rock, Arkansas. But at the end of the day, whether you're in Little Rock, Arkansas, or you're in Portland, Oregon, you're gonna have to find a livable wage for you. What do you need for you to pay your bills, for you to put a little bit of money back, and for you to be able to, to meet your needs and your responsibilities? I can't answer that, only you can answer that. But I can tell you that if you're working a job, you're putting in time, you're putting in hours, you're putting yourself in a, in a situation where you could potentially either be harmed or lose your life, and you don't feel that you're being compensated adequately, that's going to lead to your unhappiness. So make sure that you're being paid accordingly to your time, your talent, and your obligations and what you're bringing to the table. That's gonna be the number one thing that I want you guys to look at. All right, guys, number two is going to be purpose. It really, I, you know, I, I had a conversation with a lady that I talked to many, many times. This woman, she is so wise, and I, I really look at her as like a, an oracle of sorts. She, she gives me so much great advice and information. And one of the things that she said in a, in a separate conversation was, a man is a tool. Now, not like a tool like we think of now, douchebags and people that are absolute pieces of shit. But no, she said a man has a purpose. A man has to, has to be utilized in his life to feel accomplished and to feel needed, to feel worthy. And guys, that is no different than what we do and what we need in terms of our profession. So many of us, when we're working in the profession of security, we simply, we just don't have anything to do. If we're being 100% transparent, most companies, they don't truly want security. What they want is the optics of security. They want people to feel safe. They want customers to feel secure, but ultimately they don't really want security to, to do anything or to deter anything or to stop anything. Now, listen, if those things happen, that's all gravy, but ultimately the reason why 99.9% .9 of us are employed, it's to lower the liability. Most of these companies, they simply have to have someone there in a security role so that their insurance is lower and that they are able to provide the optics that this is a safe environment. So unfortunately for us as security guards and for us as men in general, we tend to find ourselves being completely unfulfilled and unsatisfied with our job. There are so many people that work for so many different companies. I talk to these guys. They're making decent money. They're making adequate money. They're meeting their needs. They're able to take care of their families and their responsibilities, but they're simply, they're not doing anything. Here in Portland, we have a lot of police officers, sheriff's deputies and corrections officers, um, former rather, that when they retire or they separate from these agencies, they get into security. Now, when they're working here in Portland, with the level of crime, with the issues that have been decriminalized, with the amount of homeless people that we have here, the amount of mental illness. If you're working in any of those three capacities, you're busting hump, you're moving every single day. You're, you're in harm's way, you're right there in the thick of the danger. You're dealing with the absolute lowest common denominator of society. And that can be exhilarating, number one, but it's also very fulfilling because a lot of these guys and women who are working in this capacity, their, their hands are dirty. They're right there in the absolute muck and the mire of law enforcement. Now, take that 
and juxtapose that with working in security and you're working in a situation where you're at a retail establishment, you're working at a bank, you're working at a warehouse and you're strictly window dressing. Guys, that is extremely hard for, for people who are on the entry level of security. If you take someone who potentially was a forward operator in the military or uh, you know, an 11 Bravo or something like that, or, or just a, a law enforcement officer in general, and you're you're handcuffing these guys and you're you're putting them in a position where all they're doing is the mannequin challenge all day that can be very very debilitating and as a man that can be very difficult another issue that i see a lot with security is that the policies of a lot of these places where we're working some of these are hands-off policies and i understand that some of these places um they have a no enforcement of shoplifting or trespassing and so you're in a situation where you're wearing a uniform, you look like a police officer, you look like a cop, you're getting disrespected every single day, you're being talked down to or spit on or any host of things. And your job is dependent on you, um, you know, just maintaining a certain level of professionalism and not reacting or responding. That can be very disheartening and can lead or can lend itself to making someone be very, very unhappy in this job in security. And I've seen that run so many great officers out. So you have to be aware of the lack of purpose. And if you feel that you're working in a capacity or you're being uh, asked to work at a job where you're not getting that need met, you're gonna have to seek out something that's potentially a little different. But let's go ahead to number three before we get into that. All right, guys, if you've made it this far, you're still sticking with me through the video. I appreciate it. Please make sure you're still hitting that like, uh, that share, that subscribe button. Any one or all of them would be appreciated. And you know you can always donate to our training fund. The GoFundMe link will be down below. Number three is a sense of service. Now, this is something that typically uh, older, and I'm gonna say over the age of 30 or 35, you typically don't start thinking about sense of service until you're a little bit later in life. A lot of times after you've had children or after you've had some time to influence people, but as men specifically, we have this innate need as we get older to leave a legacy, to create something that's bigger than ourselves. A lot of times, one of the things that I see um, in, in a lot of different retail settings or, or work settings in general, with some of the younger generation, they simply don't have a sense of service. Now, I went into the military at 17 years old. Service before self, putting the, the military before yourself, putting the military in the country before yourself, that's something that is just drilled into you almost ad nauseum. But for today's generation, a lot of people who aren't going into the military or maybe don't even believe in the, the founding principles of this country, there's just not an innate sense of service before self. And guys, if you're feeling like you're unfulfilled, you're feeling like you're unhappy, it could be because everything that you're doing right now is completely centered on yourself. We talked about in the first and the second principle that you want to make sure that you're taking care of your family. You want to make sure that you're taking care of your responsibilities, but focusing primarily on that and not thinking about the greater good or what you can do for society or for other guards coming up after you, that can lead to a sense of unhappiness as well. Try not to um, negate that no matter what you're doing, whether you're working in that retail establishment, whether you're working directly with the public or you're working in a capacity where you're simply watching a building, what you're doing, it has purpose. You have to find the purpose in everything that you're doing. If you can, can see uh, the value, the value in what you're bringing to the table by you being at work, by you holding that post down, by you filling that shift for your employer or filling that shift for your own business. This is something that will give you a sense of purpose and a sense of worth. And having that is going to be very integral and important to you being more happy with what you're doing. So lastly, guys, I want to say this to you, not as a typical security guard. I want to say this to you as Damien, just an OG at the age of 43 years old who has spent so much of my life unhappy. Guys, 
Happiness is a state of feeling. I'm happy when I'm drinking Eliza Craig, but when I finish drinking this Eliza Craig, it's gonna be gone. I'm not gonna be as happy anymore. Fulfillment is a state of being, right? Happiness is a state of feeling. Fulfillment is a state of being. I wanna explain this, right? When I am with my wife and we're having dinner and we're engaged in great conversation and we're taking a trip or we're out for the weekend or we're having great sex, I am extremely happy. But take any of those things away and I'm not as happy, just like with the Elijah Craig. But I'm constantly fulfilled because what she brings to the table, what she offers me as a partner and as a mate is way more lasting and way more important than any aspect of happiness. And guys, that is what you have to look for in your life in general, and that includes your job. Your job will not always make you happy. Your pay will never meet all of your needs, your purpose and what you do on a daily basis. It's never gonna truly make you fulfilled, even what you bring to the table in terms of service before self and legacy. You're gonna have times where people simply aren't gonna wanna hear what you have to say or listen to your teaching. I, I make these videos, I take time away from my family, I edit them, I upload them, I, I put all the little stuff and in, in little trinkets and things in there, and maybe it gets 100 views, maybe it gets 85 views, right? And if I look at that as my barometer of why I'm doing this, maybe I wouldn't be as happy. But everything in totality, your pay, your purpose, your service before self, that is what lends itself to your fulfillment. And what I want you guys to do moving forward is try not to focus on your happiness so much as you focus on your fulfillment. And this is something that I'm guilty of myself. I have to constantly, constantly, constantly remind myself, focus on your fulfillment because happiness is so fleeting. It's like a wave, it's like a tide. It comes in and it goes out. It comes in and it goes out. And there's so many variables that are gonna play into your happiness that you're gonna always be miserable. You're gonna always find a reason to quit. You're gonna always potentially find a reason to switch and find a new job. But if you can focus on your fulfillment, you can truly, truly, truly find that happiness that you've been looking for. Guys, listen, this is just my opinion. As always, I don't know everything. I welcome your comments. I welcome your feedback. What are your thoughts on this? And are you happy? Are you fulfilled with what you're doing right now? We're going into the last quarter of 2021. It sounds crazy to even say that, but we are. We're coming up on the last quarter of 2021. Are you gonna be happy? Are you gonna be fulfilled? What needs to change for you to have that? Share your feedback and as always, thank you guys so much for being a part of what we're doing here, being a part of this community. Please watch your six and as always, be great.